What's going on everybody? Chris here from projectoption.com and in today's video we're going to cover profitable option selling and the VIX index and I'm going to share some results with you to find out if there's a relationship between the two. So is it better or worse to sell options when the VIX is at higher or lower levels? Now more specifically I'm going to present results based on selling 30 day straddles on the S&P 500 ETF and I'm going to look at the results of those short straddles based on where the VIX index was at the time of entering the trade. So historically speaking, have success rates when selling straddles on SPY been higher or lower when the VIX index is at various extremes? And when trades are unprofitable, are the losses typically to the upside or downside when the VIX index is at those various levels? Now those are just two of the big topics we're going to talk about, but we will be covering even more things, so stay tuned. So this study was a pretty simple one. I started by selecting the time frame, which is January 2007 to August 2018. And the underlying that I'm going to be testing is the S&P 500 ETF, which is the ticker symbol SPY. Now the strategy we're looking at today is the short straddle. And I selected short straddles with 25 to 35 days to expiration since we're comparing it against the VIX index, which represents 30 day option prices. Now I looked at every single trading day for entries because I wanted to analyze every possible occurrence of short straddles with 25 to 35 days to expiration. Now as I mentioned before, I filtered out all the trades that did not fall within 25 to 35 days to expiration because I wanted to isolate trades with approximately 30 days or one month to expiration. And I did this because the VIX index represents 30 day option prices. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. We're going to start by looking at the success rates or the percentage of trades that had profits at expiration relative to the VIX index level at the time of selling the straddles. Now as we can see here I have six different VIX levels or six different VIX buckets so to speak um, and don't worry about the labeling for those middle two I don't know what medium or normal is those are just the words that I selected I know they could be better but anyways as we can see here the lowest two VIX buckets, so ultra low and low, which is basically VIX below 15, and the highest two VIX buckets, which is essentially VIX above 20, those had the highest success rates for the 30-day short straddles. So for the ultra low to low VIX levels, we had 61 to 72% success rates, and for the high and ultra high VIX buckets, we had 65 to 78% success rates. And interestingly, in those middle two buckets, we had success rates between 47% and 52%. So interestingly, there's not a linear relationship between the level of the VIX index and the success rate of 30-day short straddles, at least historically. So I've added one more column to this table here, which is the percentage of stock price collected, which means how much did the straddle collect in terms of the stock price, and that's the median of all the trades. So in the ultra low bucket, the percentage of the stock price collected or the median percentage of the stock price collected when selling the straddle was 2.2%. So that means when selling the straddle, the median collection was 2.2% of the current stock price at the time of entry. Now since the VIX index is a gauge of 30-day option prices, it makes sense that the percentage of stock price collected when selling the straddle is higher at higher VIX index levels. However, that did not correlate to higher success rates, so to speak, because we have high success rates in the low VIX levels, but then we see a drop in success rates in those middle VIX levels, but then we see an increase in the success rates for the higher VIX levels. When option prices are cheaper, the VIX index is lower since the VIX measures 30-day options on the S&P 500. Now, despite collecting far less premium in lower volatility environments, success rates were still high and in some cases higher than selling more expensive straddles, which is in the higher VIX index levels. Now, in short, the amount of premium collected for selling an option does not necessarily determine the likelihood of success or profits on that trade. Now, the reason the option price alone does not determine the likelihood of success is that option prices are directly related to a stock's realized or historical volatility. So if a stock's price becomes more and more volatile, the option prices will adjust higher to account for that increase in volatility. Now an exception to the above would be if there is an upcoming political or economic event that is perceived to be very significant, in which case we could see an increase in option prices without any change in the stock's volatility. 
To support the claim that I just made, I put together a plot that represents the relationship between one month historical volatility in the S&P 500 and the VIX index or one month option prices on the S&P 500. So on the bottom axis, we have the one month historical volatility, which is basically a measurement of the past one month's price fluctuations or volatility observed in the S&P 500. And on the Y axis or the vertical axis, we have the SIBO VIX index, which represents the one month option prices on the S&P 500. Now, as the chart clearly shows, as the historical or realized volatility increases, so does the VIX index or the one month S&P 500 option prices. So this chart is just showing that as market volatility increases, so do option prices. Now this should help explain why more expensive options does not necessarily mean a higher likelihood of making money because when you're selling more expensive options, the market is moving around more. Now real quick before we move on, I just wanted to mention that if you're enjoying this type of analysis, be sure to check out our options trading courses featured in the links in the description as they include tons of analysis just like the ones in this video and you'll also get full trading plans for systematic options trading strategies. You can get one of the courses for free if you open and fund a Tastyworks account using the project option referral code, but if you want to check out Tastyworks in general, be sure to check out the links in the description. Now we're going to move on to looking at the losing trades in each VIX environment. So of the losing trades in each VIX environment, how many of the losses were caused by market increases and how many of the losses were caused by market decreases? Now as we might expect, since 2007 the market has been in a strong bull market period and as a result most of the losing trades were caused by market increases. Now that's especially true in the lowest two and highest two VIX environments in which the percentage of losses from market increases were right around 70%. In the middle two VIX environments, the percentage of losses from market increases was right around 50%, which means it was basically a 50-50 split between upside losses and downside losses when selling straddles when the VIX was between 15 and 20. Now these results make sense to me in terms of the two extremes because in the low to ultra low VIX environments, the market is mostly heading higher without any major declines and that's exactly why the S&P 500 option prices are low and the VIX index is low. And since you're collecting less premium when you're selling straddles in those low VIX environments, your upside break even is closer to the current stock price, which means the market can easily rally through that upper break even price causing losses for the short straddle. And in the high to ultra high VIX environments, the market has typically just suffered a significant decline which is exactly why the VIX index is so high. And during this test period, most of the market declines were quickly recovered and any short straddles that were entered during those periods suffered losses as the market rebounded. Up next, we're gonna look at the median profits in terms of dollars and percentages of all of the short straddles entered in each respective VIX environment. So in this table, we're looking at the median expiration P&L for all of the straddles, and we're looking at the results in terms of actual dollars and also the percentage of the straddle price or the percentage of maximum profit. Now, as we might expect, based on the previous results we've looked at, the best performing environments were the two lowest VIX environments and the two highest VIX environments with mixed results in the middle two VIX environments. So as we can see here, in that low VIX environment, which is the VIX between 12 and a half to 15, the median expiration P&L was $185 in profits, which represented 35% of the straddle price or maximum profit potential. Now the ultra high VIX level, which is having the VIX over 25, that had the highest median expiration P&L at $299, which represented 39% of the straddle price at the time of entry. Now it's interesting because the percentage of the straddle price that was kept in terms of profits was virtually the same in those lowest two and highest two VIX environments. But of course, when you're in the higher VIX environment, you're collecting more premium overall. So that same percentage actually equates to a higher dollar amount. So to recap, historically speaking, the short 30 day straddles on SPY have had the highest success rates when the VIX was below 15 or above 20. The lowest success rates and profitability rates occurred when selling straddles with the VIX index between 15 and 20. Now this is something that I've observed consistently in my research and I plan on doing an entire video on why that might be. 
of the unprofitable short straddles entered in the lowest and highest VIX environments, approximately 70% of the trades lost money due to market increases. And lastly, the amount of premium collected when selling options has no direct relationship with the likelihood of profitability as option prices are a function of market volatility. That's going to do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Please leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like or if you have any suggestions for future topics. Once again, I'm Chris from Project Option and thank you for watching.